Let's do more thermal work. All right, the following problems are gonna be all dealing with different things that we've been studying with heat transfer uh, to understanding enthalpy, uh, using Hess's law, using the enthalpy of formations, uh, and using uh, Q equals MCAT, uh, the best that we can. Okay, so let's take a look at the first problem. I don't have them numbered, but here we go. There's number one. It says, use the thermodynamical data given to calculate change of F uh, for N2O5 in kilojoules per mole. So first, it does not actually give you an equation. There's some extra steps in this problem. So I have equations that have enthalpies. So you should be thinking Hess's law. Here's the rub or the trick. I don't have an actual final equation. So what is the enthalpy of a formation of N2O5? What it is, it's making one mole of the compound from its elements. So if you're gonna write in here anything like NO or, or uh, NO2, that's not correct. It comes from its elements. So a formation equation is adding its elements together. So let's bring this actually over here. And I'm writing it the way that I would find it in normal standard states. So those are both diatomics. So if N2 and O5, so now here's the trick. I want one mole here, right? So I already have N2 and I have N2, but here I have five O's and I only have two O's. So if you're not quite sure how that works, I need five halves of two, because then those twos would cancel and I have five O's, okay? So what's asking, so this is a gas, this is a gas, is what is the enthalpy of formation of the actual equation that I have right here? Okay, so that, that's the goal. That's kind of the trick of this. So here's how you do it. Like we talked about, we need to figure out how I take these and make them into my final equation. So my biggest suggestion to you is always find ones that are unique, that only show up in the actual equation and in my separate equation. So what is in here that is only in one of these? So hopefully you're kind of looking at that and I realize that N2 is here and N2 is only there and I realize that my N205 is right here, and my N205 is right there. Everything else can probably or will cancel out or add up in some way. So what I wanna do is show my work, which some of you on your EOL did not do as good of a job as I was hoping. I'm noticing that the N2 is on the proper side, so I'm gonna rewrite that. I'm not worried about if it's the right magnitude. I'm just gonna write that. And because I do want one N2 and I have an N2, that looks great. The next one, I don't know. <laughs> I don't actually know. So I'm gonna take a moment and I'm gonna go to this last one. And this last one, I have it on the proper side, but I have too many of them, right? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna write it out the way that it shows. Don't shortcut your work. But then what am I wanting? I have two of these and I only want one of these. So what I'm gonna do is I am going to take half of my equation. So I'm gonna take half of this as well. All right, so four becomes two, become one half O, and I just become one. So now the real trick, and I should put this down here because I'm gonna need this area, so I have two of these right now, is what do I do with this middle one? So honestly, you need to find something that isn't supposed to be in this final one. So I see the NO here, and I see the NO here, and I don't see it here. So the very fact that I already have it on one side, I wanna keep it on the same side. So I don't think I'm flipping this. So I'm writing two NO plus O2 gives me two NO2. The reason why, or if I don't know I'm right or not, I can check it out. So let's see, I want my NO's gone. Oh, I want two NO2's are gonna be gone. And what's gonna be left is I have an N2, I have an N205, and I have two over two, two over two, one over two, which is five over two, five halves. So there's my equation. So now I just need to add that up and I can do that a lot of ways, uh, just for safe, or uh, sake of 
room here, I'm gonna basically say that I have my change in H equals plus 180 plus negative 114 plus one half negative 110.2 kilojoules. Okay, I didn't need to actually um, flip anything uh, this time around. So my final answer on this one would be my change in H. My enthalpy of formation is 11.3 kilojoules. So that is using Hess's law, but by not being given an equation. But you are given an equation by knowing some of that information. All right, let's take a look at number two. It says 150 grams of an aqueous solution that contains 0 0.05 moles of HCl acid and 50 grams of an aqueous solution that contains 0 0.05 moles of NaOH base are mixed in a calorimeter, which you did the other day. The temperature of the resulting solution rises, assuming the heat capacity of the solution is close to that of pure water, so it's telling you C, and that the heat capacity of the calorimeter can be ignored. Guys, what that means is that the calorimeter is not absorbing any heat. So we don't have to worry about loss of heat. Determine the standard heat of reaction for this equation. So what it's saying, whenever it says heat of reaction, it's saying that. So if I threw this out again into a different idea here, you had 50 mils, sorry, 50 grams, but it's 50 mils, whenever it's a solution of HCl, I have 50 mils, because it's 50 grams of NaOH. I'm gonna put it all in there. I'm gonna have 100 grams of a solution. If you're saying to yourself, well, I thought it was grams in water, because they're telling me this is basically like water, that means that milliliters become grams. So the minute that they say specific heat capacity, I hope that you're thinking MCAT. So let's talk about what I need to do. The mass of my solution is 100 grams. The specific heat capacity was told to me. 8.3184, or sorry, 4.184. And then my final temp is 27.5 minus 21.0 degrees Celsius. And what I get, I calculate that out, fairly straightforward, is that many grams or joules of energy. But here's the thing. This right here, change of H, is usually, doesn't have to be kilojoules, but per mole, okay? And also, this will show energy flow meaning plus or minus. So we'll talk about that in a second, but first, I need moles. So let's talk about what that means, and it's not as complicated as it sounds. I'm gonna take my joules that I just had. Guys, check this out. Moles, it tells me I have this many moles reacting with this many moles. So that means I have the same amount of moles of this reacting with the same amount of moles of that. So if you're thinking addition, you're not thinking about moles. If one of them runs out, the reaction's over. So it's a one-to-one. -one. So it's, it's, it's how much is present. So I'll just make this up. What if I had 50 moles of this, of HCl, and this many moles of NaOH? You'd say, well, that's gonna clearly run out first. Well, that's how many moles are reacting. Same idea. This is how many moles are reacting. It is not addition. It is about using the smallest number present, limiting reactant. So this is the smallest amount of moles reacting, okay? This is the moles reacting. So when I get my final work here, and I'm going to convert it immediately into kilojoules, so it's 54,000 joules, I have that per mole. Please, for one moment, think, should I have a negative or a positive on that? So the thermometer says, that it rose from 21 degrees to 27.5 degrees. So the temperature is going up in the solution. So is the solution gaining energy, the system, or is the surrounding gaining energy? I hope that you think that it would be negative. 
Our thermometer says it, that means it's gaining it from somewhere else. So this is an exothermic reaction. It's losing energy. Now, it doesn't have to necessarily be written like that. Sometimes you'll see it more like this. I'll erase this in a minute, but I'll say like kilojoules per mole, right? So it's the same idea. So that is uh, using uh, MCAT uh, in terms of finding an enthalpy, not a heat, which is Q. Q and H is different. Q, we're done here. H, we're done here. Okay, very important. All right, let's look at number three. Three. It says for the reaction, and it gives me one right here. Silicone dioxide, hydrofluoric acid, makes water and silicone tetrafluoride. And now, oh, weird, it's giving me all these enthalpy formations already. It says calculate the enthalpy formation of SiF4, and there's a value on the side here. So. Once you start seeing values of specific compounds, you should be thinking products minus reactants. So let's take a look at what that looks like. So what it's saying is my change of H of my reaction is gonna be two waters. So I'm gonna be really uh, thorough here. Plus one silicone, tetrafluoride, right? Products minus Reactants. I have one silicon dioxide and four hydrofluoric acids. So that, when I'm stuck or I'm not sure what I'm being given, that is my initial starting point. So let's see what I've been given. I have water, which is negative 136.1 plus Huh, where is silicone tetrafluoride? It's asking for it. So if it's asking for it, I don't know what that is. So I'm gonna call that X. Silicone dioxide, negative 910. And hydrofluoric acid is negative 272.5. And I put a bracket. So, if I have one variable, that means that I need to know this. So where would that be? Oh, it's right there. It told me the entire reaction already. So it's negative 70, 97.8 kilojoules. So you need to do a little solving. Honestly, I would combine this first, combine that. So if I did do that, it might be your calculator for right now. Just so it, it makes a little more sense. I can't read my own work. Hope that's right. All right, so when it's all done, the enthalpy of formation of silicone ends up being this value. Okay. Now it says B, write a thermal uh, chemical equation for the formation of one mole. Formation of one mole, that sounds like a formation equation. So what I wanna do is I wanna make one mole of silicone tetrafluoride from its elements. So first I write it like that, and I just take a breath and go, okay, how are these at standard conditions? Well, silicone is a solid, fluorine is a gas, but fluorine is a diatomic, and then I need two of them. So honestly, guys, if you were gonna write this whole thing out, this value here would actually slide in to the side of that. Okay, so that's how that works. So whenever you're given a problem like this, please immediately go, okay, so that's 9, 10, Point nine, that's negative 272.5. This is negative 136.1. Start, start writing it out. Secondly, let's just do a little quick exercise. What are the formation equations for each of these? Because this is the key. These values, guys, are a result of making these compounds from their elements. So like I'd have silicone plus oxygen. I'd have hydrogen 
plus fluorine. Oh, those are diatomics. Oh, I have too many of them. So I need to do halves because I can't change the right side. And then hydrogen plus oxygen. What do I need for that? Oh, I need a half. So please, this, this is actually a really important thing. You just got four formation equations out of this problem. I'm making one mole from its elements at standard conditions. Okay? So hopefully that clears up some things for you. Okay, let's look at the second to last problem. Number four. It says a coffee cup calorimeter initially contains 125 grams of water at a temp. Potassium bromide, 10 grams, also at 24.2, so same temperature, is added to the water. And after the KBR dissolves, the final temperature is 21.1 degrees. Calculate the enthalpy change for the dissolving, the dissolving salt in both okay, units, joules per gram, and kilojoules per mole. We'll figure that out. Assume that specific capacity of the solution is 4.18, and then no heat is transferred to the solutions or the calorimeter, so we're not losing any temperature whatsoever. So, some of you might be thinking, ooh, Q salt equals Q water. It's not quite like that. I am taking my salt, 10 grams of it, and I'm placing it in 125 grams of water. So the reaction's happening between these two, okay? So the minute that you see specific heat capacity, I hope that we're thinking Q equals MCAT. So let's start plugging that in. So the mass, I want you to think about that for a second. What do you think it would be? Hope that you think it'd be 135. Specific heat capacity, whatever it tells you every time. So it's mostly water. And then the final temp. Final temp was 21.1. The initial temps were 24.2. So what I get out of that is negative 1749.3 joules. Okay, so now what do I do with that? It did not ask for the heat. It asked for joules per gram and kilojoules per mole. So first, what does that mean, joules per gram? It's the joules of the heat over the limiting reactant. Well guys, I don't have an equation in front of me, but I have 125 grams of water and I have 10 grams of my salt. So it's always the salt. So if I take 10 grams of this and I divide it, I'm gonna get my value of joules per gram. So there's my first answer that I want. Okay. And I'm going to just place this up because I'm out of room. Secondly, kilojoules per mole. Okay, I need to take the same grams and I hope that you're thinking, oh, I just need to get it into moles. So I'm gonna just start way over here. 10 grams of KBR, one mole of KBR. If you look it up, one K and one BR is about 119. And I'm gonna get 0.084 moles. So what do I do with that? Well, you take the value and you put it under your joules. Right now, whoops, this is my joules. And after you calculate, it's gonna be the 20,000, so 20.8 kilojoules per mole. You could have converted this earlier into kilojoules as well, but either way, what I'm wanting you to see is what do you do after you get your Q and you're asking for more? This is how you're doing it. So either you're asking for grams per mole, whatever it is. Okay, that's how that's gonna kinda go down. All right, the final problem. This one's a little trickier. I wanna see if you can stay with me on this one. It says the heat capacity to bomb calorimeter, so these are ones that usually have a little bit more um, exothermic reactions happening in them, uh, was determined by burning um, 6.79 grams of methane, and then it says energy combustion is that, so when I uh, combust one mole of methane, I make that much. Okay, we did this one actually as an example a while ago, just the different um, values. Temperature change was 10.8. A, what is the heat capacity of the bomb? B, a different situation. We'll discuss that after we start. So, okay, the change of the bomb itself went up 10 degrees. So this is how this would work. I have 6.79 grams of methane. This is probably the most confusing question every time. Okay, 
And what I want to do, no matter what, guys, if you ever see grams and then something is with moles, it is probably, and that's supposed to be per mole, uh, it is probably going to be something where you have to convert. So I have 16 grams per uh, for one mole of CH4. And then for every one mole, I have 802 kilojoules. So I get 340.3 kilojoules. Now, here is heat capacity. Heat capacity is your energy per your degree. How much energy does it take to increase one degree? So it increased 10.8 degrees. So my heat capacity is 31.5 kilojoules per Celsius. Okay. Got to understand that part. B. It says a 12.6 gram of acetylene produced a temperature increase of 16.9 grams in the same calorimeter. What is the energy of combustion of acetylene? Same exact concept. Okay. Same idea. So what I'm going to do first is 12.6. C2H2. I'm going to do this just a little bit differently, though, because we already have some information. So acetylene weighs 26 grams per mole. I'm going to have to go on to the next page. So here's the key to this. Um, it increased by 16.9. And I have that many moles now. So instead of talking about uh, it in the terms that I am right now, we could do it in a different way. Now, maybe there's another path, but I just want to show in case your brain is kind of going, oh, I'm, I'm not quite sure how I could do this. So what you could do is take the heat capacity of our bomb, okay? We're going to bring it here. So whenever there's a B, it's usually using something that you did in A. I hope that kind of makes sense, right? So. I have degrees, oops, I'm sorry. I wrote the wrong thing down there first. So it went up by 16.9 degrees. So I'm gonna utilize what I had from my previous problem. So for every one degree, my bomb increases uh, by 31.5 kilojoules of energy. So that means this much energy results from that. So if I wanna know the unit that it's asking me, which is kilojoules per mole, I'm in my kilojoules. I'm going to take my moles from the previous problem right here or from above, and I get what I would write it as, because this is going to be change in H, negative 1098 kilojoules per mole. Whoa, why did you just write negative? Because the minute I ask, the minute I ask for uh, kilojoules per mole, that's enthalpy. Otherwise, you could say 1090 kilojoules per mole released. Uh, a negative is not always uh, essential in every problem, but if you do know it, it is helpful. So that is a little tricky, but as you continue on, hopefully this will make more sense. So that is our second to last thermal chemistry review.